you just keep coming to church just as you are, but the promise is you're not going to stay the way you are because the same God that delivered me is the same God that will deliver you. The same God that transformed me is going to transform you. The same God that changed me is going to change you. The same God that healed me is going to heal you. I want to share a thought with you today about a way maker God that we serve or you need to know. Isaiah 43 and verse number 18 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing now, it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even, here it is, make a way. I will make a way. I will make a way in the wilderness. Wildernesses do not intimidate God. Wilderness situations in your life do not intimidate God. And he says, I will make a way in your wilderness, and I will make a way in rivers in your desert. So deserts don't even intimidate me. He goes on and he says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation is overtaking you except such as common demand. But God is faithful. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what someone has said, you really need to believe that God is faithful. God is faithful to see you through. God is faithful to be in control. God is faithful to provide a way out even though it doesn't look like it right now. God is faithful. He's basing his reputation on it. See, so many of us want to think that we're the only one going through what we're going through. But God said, you're not the only one. God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above all, excuse me, to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, also here it is, make a way of escape, make a way of escape, make a way of escape that, it may, that, it, that you may be able to bear it. You may not be able to see it today, but God will make a way of escape. See, I grew up in the 60s and I used to watch Batman and Robin. And uh, this TV series used to have arch enemies of Batman and Robin, the Cape Crusaders. And it'd be the Riddler or it'd be the Joker who had them boxed in or had them hemmed in. They were just seconds away from losing their life and the enemy prevailing. It was either over a, some hot boiling water or something of that nature. And the announcer would come in and say, could this be the end of the Cape Crusaders? Is the Riddler going to prevail and will they be destroyed? And all humanity will lose its hope. Stay tuned for the next few moments and you'll find out what will happen. And the commercial would come and then it'd come back. And all of a sudden there was a way of escape for Batman and Robin that was not there in the previous scene. There was some lever that was exposed. There was some rope that became available. There was something on his belt that he used. And I just want you to know it's a picture of where you're at today. You may think that the enemy has you hemmed in and boxed in and trapped. And this could be the end of what you're believing and trusting God for. But God will always provide a way of escape. Why? Because he's faithful. And you might be in a place right now in your life where it looks like you're in a no-way situation, a no-win situation for your life. Your marriage is already ended or talking about divorce or you've been diagnosed with stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Your finances may be so upside down, you're facing bankruptcy. Judgments are against you in lawsuits. You feel like you're in a no way out situation. But I'm so grateful that we serve a God that makes a way where there is no other way. Bill Robinson was the... Longest captive soldier, POW soldier in the history of war. He was captured in September 20th, 1965, and he wasn't released till February the 12th, 1973. This Air Force captain was shot down in Vietnam, was tortured, brutalized, no toilet, no electricity, hardly anything to eat, hogtied every day was in solitary confinement, and he didn't know how he was going to make it through the next day. But to quote him, here's how he survived. The things that kept us going up to that point was faith, 
Faith in myself that I could handle things. Faith in those around us that we could get through these things together. Faith in my country that they wouldn't abandon me. But most of all, but most of all, faith in my God. This is Bill Robinson testimony. Seven years, a POW soldier. He says, my faith in God will see me through. God made a way for Bill when there was no other way. The Bible says this. I will go before you and I will make the crooked places straight and I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and I will cut the bars of iron. I don't care how thick they are. Isaiah 40, one of my favorite verses, four things God will do. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain or hill will be made low. The crooked places in your life I will make straight, and the rough places shall be made smooth, because we serve a God that makes a way where there is no other way. There is no obstacle that God cannot remove. There is no rejection that he cannot fix. There is no limitation that he cannot lift. There is no objection that he can't put away. There is no hindrance that he cannot take away. There is no resistance that he cannot destroy. There's no barrier that he can tear down. I'm about ready to preach right now, old school. There's no noise that he can't silence. There's no shout that he cannot hush. There's no restlessness that he cannot bring ease. There's no worry that he cannot bring peace. There's no fear in your life that he cannot stop. There's no door that he cannot open. There's no code that he cannot break. There's no chain that he cannot break. There's no wall that cannot come down. There's no lie that he cannot change. There's no past that he cannot heal. There's no hurt that he cannot bring help. And there's no pain that he cannot fix. He still still storms. He still walks on water. He still feeds 5,000. He changed water into wine. An axe floated. The Red Sea was divided. The sun stood still. He cast out devils. He healed the sick. And he raised the dead. God is a God that makes a way where there is no other way. People talk about the power of Hulk when he smashes. People talk about Thor's hammer. Again, I grew up in the 60s and I grew up watching Felix the cat, the wonderful, wonderful cat, and his bag of tricks. He had a friend, Vavum. Vavum was his friend, and whenever he get into a hard place or between a rock and a hard place or there'd be an obstacle in front of him, he'd say with his high-pitched voice, Vavum, what are we going to do? And Vavum would go, Vavum, Vavum, Vavum. And the obstacle that was in front of them would vanish, would break down, would be destroyed. And I want you to know, you serve a God with a mighty voice. And he put it between the pages of the Bible. And when you speak God's word over your situation, begins to happen in your life. You serve a God that makes a way where there is no other way. You and I were sin-bound. We were hell-bound. We were devil victims. We had no way to redeem ourselves. We had no way to appease God. All of us were damned to go to hell. But Jesus made a way through the cross of Calvary. Jesus redeemed us. He became our propitiation. He became our sanctification. He became our sacrifice. He became, he made a way for us to have eternal life, be born again, be saved, be called children of God, and go to heaven. He made a way on the cross, and God will make a way in your life. The Bible says, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. He made a way. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace. Through his blood he redeemed you. He made a way. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. He made a way. In 1 John 2 and verse 2 And he himself is the propitiation of our sins, 
and not our sins only, but also the sins of the world. Hey everyone, we want to thank you for watching Real with Diego. If you would like weekly updates on upcoming episodes, then please visit and like our Facebook page. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You know, without each and every one of you, this show wouldn't be where it is today. We couldn't do it without you. So make sure you like, repost, and share. We want to stay connected with you because why? The more sharing, the better. We really want to hear from you, so don't hesitate to message us as well. And if you're ever in the Inland Empire, then please come and visit us. We would love to meet you. But just do one simple thing for us. Come as you are. In Genesis 22, I want to read you a story about Abraham. Abraham is kind of in a no way situation. He doesn't know how this is going to happen. That God is going to ask him to sacrifice his son. That does not make any sense because this son is the seed of promise. This son is what I believed and trusted God for me and my wife. Now you're asking me to kill him. You promised me that as the stars in the sky and as the sands of the shore would be my descendants. But you're asking me to do something that if I do it, there will not be a fulfillment of that promise. God, I need you to make a way where there is no other way. Because I don't know what you're, what you're asking me to do doesn't make sense. So I'm going to navigate you through a few verses, but I really encourage you to read the whole story. 22.1, now it came to pass after these things that it, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. I love that. God tests Abraham. Now, God tested him not because he didn't know what the end result would be. God knew, but he wanted Abraham to know what he could do through his trust in God. Number two, God has tests in our lives, not that we could fail, but that we could pass. God has tests in our lives so that we could have testimonies. If there's no test, you got no story, no testimony. If you don't like the word test because of your theology, then just exchange the word test for ask and reread the verse again. Because I want you to know, if you're a Christian, God's going to ask you to do a lot of things. And it's going to challenge you, and it's going to feel like a test. Because it's going to test your faith, and it's going to test you deciding who is the Lord and God in your life. It's going to test you uh, crucifying the flesh. It's going to be a test. And he says, here I am. And then he said, notice the emotions in this. Read it slow. Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love means the world to you. And go to the land of Moriah, the place that David bought the land for the sacrifice that thousands of years later, Jesus would die on that hill called Moriah. And that there is the place that you are to offer your son Isaac. Verse 3, so Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey to go follow this voice. If there was ever a reason to sleep in, that would have been the day. You know what, when God asks us to do something, it's amazing how many excuses we have and how many things we let get in the way and how we procrastinate, at least not you, but me. Oh, I meant to do it. Oh, I was about ready to do it. You see how serious he is. He heard from God and he gets up very, very early in the morning to get on that mission of purpose. And the Bible says it takes him three days to travel. I mean, it's not going to come easy. But have been every reason why to reason this thing out and think about it for three days and say, turn around. It's not worth it. This is too big. I don't see a way out. But it goes on and it says, it says verse 6, So Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went up together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, what's this, my father? He says, my father... And he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood, and where is the lamb for the burnt offering? See, this is a teenage boy. He's about 14 or 15 years old, okay? He's not dumb. He's familiar with his daddy offering sacrifices. So he sees the wood, he sees the fire, and he sees him, and he sees his daddy, and he says, where's the lamb? Where's the lamb? So I want you to recognize this is a son's submission to his father. That even Isaac doesn't understand what his daddy is doing right now. But he trusts in his father. That he's never hurt me. He's never harmed me. And, he's, and, and I'm going to follow his lead. 
So he says, me and the lad, he tells his servants, me and the lad are going to go yonder and worship. And I love this phrase, and we're going to come back to you. We're, we're, plural, we, we, we are going to come back to you. Sir Isaac, Sir Abraham, did you not hear what, G, what God said? He told you to kill your son. So if you kill your son, how are you going to come back? <laughs> Unless you know something about God's character and what he promised he doesn't renege on. That God is going to have to do something then to provide this, this heir, this inheritance. So it goes on and he says, verse 8, watch this. This is what comes out of Abraham's mouth when Isaac asked. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb. <laughs> I don't know how, but God's going to provide. Don't make no sense. But God's going to provide the lamb. It goes on and it says he raises his hand to kill him. But verse 11, the angel of the Lord called to, a to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Yes. I love how he talks to God when God asks him. God says, hey. And Abraham says, yes. When God talks to you, is your first response yes or what do you want? First tell me what you want and then I'll let you know if there's going to be a yes or not. If we could be mature Christians and say, no matter what God asks me, yes. Imagine, husbands, if you heard your wife just say yes all the time. How happier you would be. Wives, how happier you would be if your husbands just said, yeah, honey, yes. Honey, will you, yes. Can you, yes. But most of us want to interrogate each other first. Have a discussion first. Here's this man of God who says, anything you ask, my answer to you ahead of time is yes. I'm trying to show you, because we in the church can become very, very professional in emotionalism of hearing sermons. That we get excited that God is a God that makes a way where there is no other way. He made a way with David when he killed Goliath. Hannah could not bear no children, and God opened her womb. Joseph was just in a pit about ready to be killed, and then he was in a prison. But God made a way where there was no way. Jehoshaphat was surrounded by the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. But God made a way where there is no other way. See, we love... And then you walk out of here and it lasts you to the parking lot. And you go home and you don't see God making a way in your finances. You don't see God making a way in your marriage. You have emotional issues and you're still addicted to whatever. I'm tired of emotional hype that goes on in the church. Tell me what I need to do. Show me what my responsibility is so that I can experience this God that makes a way. So that's what I'm going to do now. Thank you. So the story goes on and he says this. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on this lad. Do anything to him. For now I know you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Watch this beautiful verse. Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked. There behind him was a ram. Where did the ram come from? He didn't see it a few moments ago. But what came out of his mouth earlier? God will provide a lamb. God's going to provide a lamb. God's gonna, I don't know how. I don't know when. But God's going to provide a lamb because he promised me an heir. He can't kill this son. He can't have me to kill this son. And, and we fulfill the promise. And so then he calls that place one of the most profound names that you and I say all the time. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He names that place the place of God's provision. God made a way and he provided for my life when I didn't know how he was going to provide. When I didn't know I was going to pay my bills, when I didn't know how I was going to get out of jail, when I didn't know how to survive this accident, when I didn't know how this would happen, God provided. He's Jehovah Jireh. He made a way where there is no other way. Hey everyone, we want to build a relationship with you. If you have any questions or simply want to reach out and let us know how you feel, please message us. Or you can visit our Facebook page and leave a comment, even send a video if you like. However you want to share your life, we're down. Just be sure to do one simple thing, come as you are.
So my last point is this. If you and I are going to experience God making a way where there is no other way, then sometimes it's just not going to make sense what God is doing. You're not going to understand it. And I don't know that Abraham understood everything, but his faith and belief in God was more than enough. He just kept moving forward. And when things don't make sense of what's happening around, just keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. That's my advice to you. When God doesn't make sense, when things in your life don't make sense, just keep moving forward. When my sons left the church to go to another church, it didn't make sense how they were going to come back. And it didn't make sense what, how God would use it to bring them back. But they both individually had experiences of something that happened in their lives that revealed the will of God. Man, that didn't make sense how God was going to do it. I maybe thought it was going to be a conversation. That made sense to me. But they had their own experience. It didn't make sense because remember when I said I'm looking for a job? I called every, now I didn't, I knew people. So I'm not a nobody. I've been in a church call. I had a guy who was a high corporate person at a plant. He called the other plant that was near here. In Baldwin Park, I'm trying to remember the city. In Baldwin Park, he worked up north. He was a plant manager. He said, do you need a job? I said, yes, I need a job. He said, I'm going to call Baldwin Park. You just go up there. Just fill out the application. We'll get you in. I'm, planning, I know, I'm calling him right now. I'm still waiting for the guy to call me now for the job. Because God said this, I'm going to provide for you, but I'm going to do it my way. Now, you may want an easier way to launch your church from this church, but I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut the umbilical cord because you're going to lose your pastor. You're going to lose your influence. You're going to lose all your friends, but you're going to have to trust me to do something. I'm going to put that church together. It will not be influenced by nobody else but me. That didn't make sense to me that I could not find a job other than that job. See, he wanted me to find, work there because he wanted to be, me to be a nobody there. He wanted me to go there because he wanted me to hear him in my pain. Getting up at 12 o'clock in the morning, because you can hear God at 12 o'clock in the morning. Midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. He wanted me to go there to say, this is just a moment. It's not a career. And if I give you a good job, I know you. You'll want to climb up the corporate ladder. You'll see position. You'll see title. I want to put you. They don't care about your opinion. They don't care about your resume. Just unload the doggone boxes. I'd stand there with the supervisor. I think we could do this better. I think I could cause more efficiency. I think we did. He said, just unload the doggone boxes. See, that didn't make sense to me. I thought I was being hurt, abused, misused, pain. But God was using my pain to mold me and shape me to get to where I'm at today. God makes a way where there is no other way. See, sometimes there are blocks in our lives with our wisdom, our skills, our looks, our techniques, our experience, we try to break through the blocks that are in front of us. See, but we're attacking it. We're attacking it from a horizontal, what we see, our perspective. This is how, we can do some damage, but eventually we're going to grow tired and realize that the block that's in front of us, we can't move. So we need a God that makes a way where there is no other way, who has a whole different perspective than we, who does not attack our problem from a horizontal, but attacks our problem from a heavenly, from a vertical. And busts that and destroys it. What you and I can't do, God can do. Stop trying to attack your problem from a horizontal. Look up from a vertical and say, God, you attack it and you destroy it. What's up, everyone? I hope you loved today's episode. Make sure to tune in next week for the final episode of this series. You know, the Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die and after that is judgment. It goes on to further say we will all stand before the judgment seat 
of Christ. See, God is a judge. I don't know if you've ever been before a judge or a courtroom. It could be pretty intimidating. God is a judge, and because he's a judge, he has to judge our life. The Bible says that everything we've ever said, thought, or done, he knows about. I don't know about you. I want to be I want those things forgotten. I want those things removed. I want a judge to be righteous toward me and kind toward me. And the way that you will get a great judgment is by accepting God's sacrifice for your sin. See, Jesus came to this earth to take the judgment that was due to you and I. So you and I would never have to experience the penalty of that judgment. But you need to know today that God is a just judge. He, you can't lie to him, you can't connive him, you can't deceive him. He knows everything. So it'd be better for us just to say, I'm guilty, I did it. But I accept Jesus who took the penalty, the wrath of your judgment against me. So I never have to be judged for the wrong that I've done today. Today, God is here to love you by being a loving judge and a kind judge and a forgiving judge. Not a judge of wrath, damnation, and punishment. But that comes because you accept Jesus Christ, His Son, who came to take the penalty of your judgment. So if you're ready to be forgiven of the transgressions and the sins and the disobedience of your life, and never have to experience the consequences, then just say this, Jesus, come and live in my heart. You are my judge today. And I accept Jesus who paid the price for all the bad things that I've ever done and I will forever be changed. Thank you for loving me today, in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching. Hey, I wanna personally invite you to Abundant Living Family Church. If you're ever in the area, come by and visit us. If you're far away, wherever you are in the world, then just contact us and let us know, please, that this program is making a difference in your life. We have over 70 nations represented in our church. We are a multicultural church. We are a multi-generational church. We have young people, we have teens, we have uh, Gen Z's, millenniums, baby boomers, and all kinds of people. We love making people feel warmed and welcome. And we love the challenge of presenting and preaching the gospel to people that have never, ever been to church. So don't be intimidated. Come and visit us. We won't hurt you. God bless.